Hi there guys, it's Deezer Shoe here, and today I'll be doing a deck profile for my Cyber Angels with Herald. Or well, Cyber Angel Herald, uh, in any way you want to say it. Uh, yeah, so this is the deck profile. Uh, I'm going to explain what I run for the deck and also what type of cards you can probably take out or uh, choose to uh, adjust for your liking for the deck. Uh, you can choose to run certain type of builds uh, with this, but I found that this is consistent. Uh, build is what I prefer. This build I made was more consistent, and yeah, it's based off the um, the replay that I did for my deck, uh, uh, dual replays in a way. So yeah, onto the deck, shall we? I run three Manjus, your staple for the, any ritual deck. You need that three. You try and max that much, as much as possible. Uh, three Cyber Petite Angels. You can choose to run this card if you want to, but I prefer to run this card because it allows you to, uh, it, it, it's it, pretty much like an additional, uh, Manju for the deck. So pretty much it's like, you have six Manjus in this deck. And, uh, it's more of a, uh, a pure Cyber Angel build in a way, kind of. But that's why I prefer to run, uh, free and free. So, yeah. Uh, I preferred maxing it out. Also, it doesn't hurt to draw into it because it allows you to search uh, your Ritual Machine Angel and Ritual Tower Spell cards as well. Uh, I run three Scepters for Sars Sovereignty as well. To play, yeah, you play three Scepters and three uh, Sovereignties to search out the searches like that, and yeah, it allows you to get draw power. Also, the tech I'm running in this deck, I'm running one Archlord Christia. Uh, you can choose to run it if you can't find it anywhere at your locals or anything like that. Uh, Christy allows you to lock out plays later on in the game, but if you can play it first game, so first turn in the game, I don't think it's a good idea because it, because it opens up doors to rejecting all those uh, spell traps and other type of negation. Unless you have Herald on the field on first turn, uh, then you can probably do it then, but otherwise, uh, Christy is alright card. Uh, you can choose to take it out later. I'll explain what you can take it out later uh, later on. Uh, also, for the rituals, I run free Benten. Benten is your main uh, ritual monster. It, you need it in the deck because it Benten allows you to search out any of your life fairy type monsters. Uh, not just ritual monsters, but any type of life fairy monster. Uh, also, I run two Edithin and one Dakini. Uh, reason for this is because uh, Edithin, when you combo it with a uh, Benton allows you to get a free ritual spell and light fairy type monster to your hand. So you can grab, I know, say a Herald Perfection and also a uh, Dawn of the Herald as well. Uh, yeah, uh, or uh, Machine Angel Ritual, then probably one of your other Cyber Angels uh, in a way with uh, Benton. So yeah, it allows you to go for more plays later on in the turn. And also the Kini allows you to get rid of uh, strong monsters your opponent controls. You can choose to uh, take uh, in my, in the deck. You can choose to. You don't have to run uh, these three if you don't want to. Uh, uh, the Kini and uh, Edithin. Uh, but I prefer to run it because I'm, I'm, ma I'm making the deck more of a, uh, a cyber angel build rather than uh, uh, you're based on just three of the uh, monsters bent in. Uh, Saphira and uh, Herald of Perfection. I prefer to expand my options rather than that. Sometimes it can be dead draws. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can dead draw them, uh, but sometimes you don't uh, draw into them that often. Mostly you search out for them since they're a one of or two ofs. Also, for the other ones, I run free Herald of Perfection and uh, two Saphira, Queen of Dragons. I uh, you can also run this for free. You can take out probably uh, a Dakini or anything like that. But I'll explain the uh, options for what you can take out later on. Later on, uh, for the spells, I run free preparation rites. Oops, trying to get to the camera center. And a pre -prepar uh, pre preparation of rites and one preparation rites. You're free. You're pretty much your quadruples of the solemn quadrio or quad solemn quad. Uh, Solemn quad? No, it's not Solemn. It's the preparation quad. <laughs> so preparation, pre preparation, ah, pre preparation, ah, pre preparation of rites. Allows you to search one, or allows you to add one uh, ritual monster and one spell card, ritual spell card that have the same text in them. So uh, pretty much, 
the spell card allows you to play the ritual monster and the ritual monster uh, requires the certain spell card so that you can only play with you can only search out for cards like dawn of herald to search out uh, herald of perfection or uh hymn of light for uh Sephira, queen of dragons so those are your only two options when you're playing uh, preparation right pre-preparation rights preparation rights allows you to Preparation Rites allows you to uh, search out any level 7 or lower ritual monster to your hand and afterwards you add a ritual spell card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, you can set it up with uh, ritual sanctuaries and stuff just to dump the uh, the ritual spell card and grab something else and use to, uh, usually use uh, Preparation Rites afterwards to grab a ritual monster and also grab back the uh, ritual you ditched with uh, ritual sanctuary bef uh, beforehand to add it back to your hand for a free uh, Plus zero, I guess. I guess it's plus zero in a way. Not really a plus one, but more of a plus zero. Uh, I also run free ritual, sorry, machine angel rituals because it's a ritual. Oops, and not camera bit. Uh, machine angel rituals is it, this deck is more of a pure in a way for cyber angels. I think, and uh, in my inter in my experience uh, of playing deck over and over again, uh, this is the more con I think this is the more consistent build, the pure version because. There's the there's problems with the normal version. Uh, well, I wouldn't say normal because every deck is different for Cyber Angels. Uh, but if you're not running like the Kini and all those, it makes it a whole lot harder. You have to use like Xyz and all those, uh, all those type of things. Basically, just to go through loops, you have to jump through loops just to uh, get over a single boss monster. And if you have this and a Kini, it allows you to. Uh, if they only have the one boss monster field, like. Uh, Let's say, uh, I don't know, Ultimate Falcon or uh, Towers and all that. It's pretty much a no, Towers if you have Dakini. Pretty much allows your opponent, if you have Dakini, you pretty much let your opponent send one of their monsters to the grave. They, they control. Also, I run two Hell of Dawn of the Herald, uh, two Hymn of Light, uh, two Ritual Sanctuary. I don't run three of these because... You don't need to go into this as often, and once you do, you pretty much can do whenever you want. And if they just MST, that's fine. You've already used it during your turn, so you pretty much got a uh, got the plays off beforehand. So yeah, yeah. They don't. I don't really care if they twin twist or anything like that to it, because I've already uh, used it during my turn, unless they do it during your turn, and they disrupt your place, which is really bad. Uh, two twin twisters and also one instant fusion. You can choose to run two in fusion if you want, but I chose to run. Whoops! Ah, I keep knocking the camera. I uh, I choose to run one. Uh, for the extra deck, uh, I also run. Uh, I run one cheer girl, fairy cheer girl. Uh, one Dagesto Emerald. One Abyss Dweller. This is pretty much a rank four stand. Uh, one Gaga Cowboy. One Castell. One Diamond Dire Wolf. One Heartland Draco. Uh, one. If you also want more pass for the rank four plays that require three monsters, Deltaros as well, uh, just to get it off. You can also run uh, number one o. Is it number one o three? I think. Let me just look it up. Uh, no, we're not one o three. That's uh, Ragnar zero. One o four is Masquerade. Uh, you could just run Masquerade if you want uh, to allow you to go with additional plays, but uh, you could probably take a one rank fours in a way, just to. Mix it up. Uh, one Bedolmy M7, one Photon Strike Balancer, the one lonely Beatrice, which is that one? You only use it for one anyway. Just you pretty much it's all about bubble chain. You can just send any card you want from your deck to graveyard. Uh, one Utopia Beyond, Beyond, uh, one Norden, and the last but not least, if Beatrice is destroyed, you know what happens next. I run uh, Dante Pilgrim of the Burning Abyss. I uh, you can probably take this out and replace it for I don't know, Masquerade or anything like that. Yeah, you can choose to adjust it however you want. Uh, but for the deck, now, you, there are several options you can choose to run with the deck. Uh, you can also combo, uh, basically adjust your deck to run a Gale Dogra. Gale Dogra is used to combo off with uh, Herald of Arclight. Pretty much what you do is if you have Arclight in your extra deck, which you could probably take out Dante with, uh, use Gale Dogra to pay three thousand light points to send a Herald, Arc Herald of Arclight from your extra deck to the graveyard, and Arclight will allow you to search out a ritual spell or ritual monster. 
and with Geldogra you can sh choose to use it up to as many times as you can pay so two times unless your opponent upstarts you for 9,000 yeah that would be bad but yeah uh, you can only use two times with this effect so you can send these to the graveyard to search out a ritual and a ritual a ritual monster and a ritual spell depending on what you're missing but it's a hefty cost with life points and I don't think that's a really good idea because it leaves you in a worried state in a way and it's hard to control your field as well uh, also you can choose to run the third ritual sanctuary I chose to not put in there but I probably will take it out uh, maybe depending on how much testing I do also you can choose to run Naladona Herald and uh, Human Fly just to max out three of these copies but I don't really want to draw these too much often unless if I have another pre-preparation rights allows me to uh, play these cards more easily but if you draw these and you don't have the rich monster in here it's kind of bad that's why I run two of them because I felt like it's I prefer to use my other monsters more rather than the rich ones because the rich ones are just to go off as off uh, uh, go off to do more bigger plays so uh, I chose to run two and two rather than three and three because uh, you don't see see your spell cards as often and uh, well, with, I mean the ritual spells as much as often, uh, so you can search these out normally with uh, pre-preparation more easily. Also, you can choose to run Third Herald if, as free. Uh, uh, free. You can also run. Uh, you can also try and run the Third uh, Sephira Herald of uh, Sephira Herald of Angel. No, not Herald. Why am I saying Herald? Queen of Dragons. Jeez. You can also run the Third Sephira just to maximize your plays. Uh, since it's a dragon type you have to be careful when you're uh, playing with, uh, with if you've got Herald of Perfection on the field. Uh, don't mix it up for a, a fairy because it's a dragon. And also you can run the triple terraforming just to get out your uh, your oh, your ritual sanctuaries more easily. So you run three terraformings and three uh, ritual sanctuaries just to get your other stuff more often. Other cards you can choose to put in are the instant fusion build. Uh, yeah, sorry, instant fusion build. You can also add another instant fusion as you if you want. You can also add regekis and all that. Uh, but I also honest as well. But I prefer not to because you have enough plays to use for the time being with your deck. And uh, regekis is more of a it's a minus one in a way, and you prefer to control your opponent's field. And if you have herald on the field already. Our profession allows you to negate stuff from your hand, so even if they activate like Regeki and all that, you can just negate it easily. So they go minus while you go plus zero, in a way? I don't know. I don't know how to say it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'll be testing out other types of builds as well. I could probably run, uh, try and make the uh, um, the Heratic build if I chose, chose, uh, chose if I want to. If I chose to make it. But I felt like the the Herald build is very bricky. I test out different types of hands and stuff, and it's just like, how the hell do you play this? How the heck do you play this? And uh, yeah, you go minus more often, unless you open up with, uh, I don't know, Dazolkin, uh, Dazolkin? Dazolkin? I don't know. The rank 6. It allows you to go for. No, not rank 6. Ultimate Telzokin, that's it. Unless you can uh, summon Ultimate Telzokin first turn and do stuff. But you don't, I've tested out the build so many times. You, It's like a 1 in 3 chance of getting a Telzokin, depending on how many ritual spells and stuff you have. And you're not, it's not really a ritual deck, it's more of a synchro based deck with Telzokin. So yeah, I don't like that. I prefer more of a casual ritual, well, I prefer a casual yet competitive ritual build for uh, Cyber Angels. Because I've tried to make it, make it more consistent as possible, and this build is pretty much more consistent in a way. So yeah, uh, this is DCRS here, and I hope you guys enjoyed this while I've been talking for, for, talking for about 14 minutes. Oh uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Bye!